Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to FM23 Youth Factory. This is episode 35. This is the only other competition we have besides the league left this season. It's the FA Trophy. We're into the second round already further than we were expected to be this season. But Havant and Waterlooville is our opponent for this one. They are currently in the sixth tier, or in the seventh. So they are the favorites here, and we're on the road. But they're towards the bottom end of the league or towards the top end of our league it doesn't put us that far apart but they're absolutely favorites for this one and i'm not exactly at my top top notch squad i'd say we are well most of the way there 1.5 squad we got three guys through some squad rotation that are in for this one which you kind of want to bring your your best <laughs> to a matchup such as this when you're playing a team a division above you difficult situation there but Bertielli does well come off his line and get to that one and Sumahoro wow what a play and he beats the keeper we lead 1-0 what a play what an assist from Bertielli first off the uh, coming off his line and getting to that ball in the first place was already a fantastic play great first touch to get that out front read that the keeper was not charging out at him so he'd have a little space able to run onto the end of it what a play there and it's one nil <clears throat> the squad rotation that we have going for this one uh, we've got Kitching in at center back. Webb has been experiencing a lot of fatigue of late. He doesn't have a great amount of stamina, and we have had a very loaded schedule. Sumahuro, great job to win that one. Pen Reese gets his chance, aims for that top right corner, but uh, overhits it a bit, leans back a little too much. Kasungo Batumbo, one of the others in that squad rotation, set up here in place of Gordon. Gordon is probably going to have to play the second half. That's an early yellow card, a little bit worrying there for... Kasango Matumbo and Gordon hits rest he needs. That's blocked. Thornhill gets a second chance at it. Keeper was laying on the ground there momentarily, but uh, Thornhill already had kind of taken a touch anyway. And, oh, great job from Kitchen to get there. But McFadden does not close that out well. And offside. Thornhill is the third one who is in as we still have a suspension uh, that we are dealing with here. So, 5-3, the XG absolutely favoring us. It looks like they could get a goal in that second half, though. Uh, we have the bulk of the stats leading our way, but they're the home team, and they're going to be a little surprised by how effective we've been in this game, I would think. And I've, uh, They're going to come out a lot hungrier in the second half, maybe with some... Uh, for all we know, they've got some bench guys that are getting some minutes that they're going to be looking to bring on some starters in their place in the second half. I'm going to give Kasungo Batumbo another 5 to 10 minutes, and then we're going to bring on Gordon. Nice job from Kitching there. Kitching's playing well. He's started to improve uh, a bit rapidly here of late, and we could start seeing a lot more of him. Arthur, find Sumahoro. Thought maybe we'd gotten offside there. We'd maybe made that move a little early no harm either way as they had got it cleared away but play continues Arthur Thornhill now catching Kasungo Matumbo over the top for Arthur Arthur's got Sumahoro on the switch we got behind the defense there that's all onside without a doubt and it's 2-0 is that going to be enough Kasungo Matumbo great job there gets Arthur over the top really well weighted ball and Arthur, great assist. Sumahoro, easily on side. That was Arthur who got the run to get us behind the D, and then we just had a couple steps on him. Sumahoro just matches what Arthur has done and gets in the right position, and it's a two-goal lead. Lan Lanahan Penry switches. Sumahoro looked like he was held. Really looked like he was held. I mean, he just stopped in his tracks before the ball had, had ever arrived. Uh, not, not getting back to it and no call though hassle as always always noted you know this game just does not display fouls properly uh, the new match engine in FM25 will 
be a welcome chance. Oh my goodness, how is that? Wow. Oh my gosh. So Mahoro is the one who redirected that and redirected it into the bottom of the crossbar and it somehow came out. Okay, Sango Matumbo, that yellow card has worried me long enough. We'll bring on a fatigued Ryan Gordon, which is why he was on the bench in the first place. Uh, Mortland is exhausted, but I do not have a proper backup. Uh, yes, I do. I do with Kitching. Kitching, so that means Evans would be coming on. And then we'll, we'll have to get in and do it this way. Double change, we're going to bring on uh, Kamara as well. A little more experience, a little more rest for McFadden. Offside. That was not on Penrice. He made the right move, but the pass did not get there when it needed to from McFadden. Delayed reaction. Red nap. Finds Gordon. Well, that was the right place, right time, right weight. A little bit of bend on it. It was well played. Already in a stoppage and up 2-0. Looks like we are going to make it out of this round. Bad giveaway there, but Bercielli easily on it. Well off his line. Sweeping. We've seen a couple sweeping type moves from him that uh, are much appreciated. Because I know what it's like to have a goalkeeper who just does not sweep for the life of them. Pen Reese earns the corner and that should almost see this thing out minute and a half left Thornhill over the top Gordon poor header didn't read where the keeper was I get it though ball coming over his shoulder like that good save from Bertielli Kamara keeps it in well switches play less than a minute to go Thornhill oh, had a good chance for the through ball but uh, we're gonna draw a foul and Nicholson picks up the yellow and time nearly up Evans, long ball towards the corner, makes sense under the circumstances, but straight to the opposition, then they kick it straight out. Just wait, awaiting the whistle now. And there it is. A well-earned 2-0 victory, the XG right on it, and they did not quite look like ever scoring. The XG probably backs that up. Right outcome? into another round getting well deeper into this tournament than expected now heading to the third round proper of the fa trophy we're on to mid-december but things have not gone well over the last few weeks uh, our training facilities are upgraded so that's going to help us with the development of players but we've had five injuries including a few not so minor ones uh, to first team players and that has put us in a bit of a bind, and our performances have dropped. I went on vacation for a little bit, so it was the assistant manager, not the instant results. And we've had a bit of a struggle through that stretch. Uh, we actually haven't won anything in our last four, and that's where we left off at, the Havant and Waterlooville. So the assistant manager comes away with zero wins over the last four all-league games and just three points, including a loss in the last one. Still in the promotion playoff zone. 44 points, though, is all. Fortunately, though, we're still just three behind Maidenhead and Truro. Totten have pushed on a little bit further, but Real Bedford are starting to pull away with the league a little bit, though they, too, picked up a couple losses here in the last four or five matches. So struggles throughout the top, really. I mean, we've just struggled a little more than most uh, over the last little bit so we're gonna have to try to get things back on track we do have our fa trophy third round match at chelmsford up next Chelmsford is currently 12th in the national league south so once again we're playing a team uh, one level above us and i can already tell you they got a pretty big name here in elkin baggett who is somebody i had on my previous save uh, last year big time player uh top indonesian player that uh, i was able to bring in for as he's played in england for years and brought in quality player he's going to be tough to uh, break down fortunately over that few week stretch uh, three of the five injuries that we incurred have now cleared up 
And those guys are back into the squad, but we're still missing two of our most important players. Our most important player, Ryan Gordon, is out with a twisted ankle, and he is expected to be back in about a week and a half with a two-week timetable on Bercielli from a fractured finger. So uh, key, key members both missing could be continually a tough stretch without them. I think with my control, maybe we can come out on top still, but it's it's been asking a lot to, to get through this little injury stretch here and all the fatigue. We've just continually had such a busy, busy schedule all season long up to this point. It'll clear up a bit, but they really wait until you've gone through a super, super rough stretch to do that. We've had squad rotation each and every game. Uh, despite that, it hasn't been enough. Match load's been too heavy. Uh, the squad rotation has not been sufficient enough. It's helped, but it's not stopped the injuries. And actually, we locked out for quite a while, staying mostly healthy uh, until this last little stretch. But this has led to a significant drop in form that we're going to need to bounce back from here pretty quickly if we are going to get back into, like, say, second place before the end of the season. The early assessment on our upcoming intake in March is that it's going to be an excellent intake, but not the five-star that we had a year ago. Uh, one nice thing, though, is it's players across the top. With no attacking mids, which is a real problem for us, and defensive mids, and really only one center mid. So we've got one player that's going to have to be retrained. A lot of center backs, though, that's a good thing. Very much in need right now. I would love to see one of them able to come in right away and... You know, definitely between these guys on top, there's got to be uh, two to three players there. Hopefully one of them also has some quality, but uh, seem to really be lacking some, some depth in what we have. Jonesford playing a standard 4-4-2 with nothing but known quantities in their lineup. So they've definitely got some bigger names, some older players in the database, or you know, at least mid-20s. It's going to be difficult to break them down, and especially with the amount of rotation that is on for us. Kasungo Matumbo is in on a massive drop-off from Gordon, but Gordon is our best player, so it is going to hurt to not have him. But Sumahoro is one of those who's been injured and out. This is his first game back. And have Penry's on top. Thornhill has finally learned the attacking mid position enough to be semi-comfortable with it anyway. And he's going to be in there at the start as he's a definite upgrade to uh, Arthur. Thornhill turns and scores his fifth goal of the season. What a start. We've actually already played 20 minutes now, but uh, what a play there. Thornhill well positioned there on the inside, and he just comes in and takes what, three touches before he even takes the shot. Just a quick little juggle there. The defense doesn't pounce on him at all. And he goes opposite post, gets it in on target. Early yellow card for him. Each side, two shots apiece here. Dangerous long throw, but Hassel clears it away. We give it away on that exchange a little bit, but we do recover it. Keep the play going. Sango Matumbo turns back in. Atkins, now Thornhill, and he gives it away. So a couple misplaced passes from him already. That looked offside, but no flag, and it's one all. Not sure how... I mean, our guy who's defending on the ball is the last defender. And that looked offside. That looked offside on the replay. Alejandro continues to run. He's going laterally, and it looked like he's at least a step off. Oh, there's a defender on the other side. There is one defender on the other side who is off screen until just at that last moment. And he plays him on. Bad play on his part. Oh, and they get two in moments. Ouch. From a free kick, we're trying to play up on the high line. And one guy just starts making that run. And we start chasing a little too late. Line doesn't move. Passes very well timed from Antal. Looks like a design play. Now we just point three seven, actually just point six seven between us. There's already three goals in this. 
McFadden already also on a yellow as that guy go, comes close to making it a third. Things are not going well of late, especially those yellow cards for our defense is a very, very worrying sign. This could be the end for us. The number of missing pieces we have combined with a bad run of form. Oh, gosh. Big mistake there, too. Nearly another. They're all over us at the moment. We were just hoping to get to halftime without uh, giving anything else up. Thornhill starts a counterattack but has zero support. We had all ten back in our box for that play. So he ended up being the highest guy. You can see zero XG from the, from the goal on. We haven't had another shot. Without being too harsh on them, we have got a positive result. They are considered to be underdogs for this match. So sympathizing with them. Noting the bad luck has done the trick. Got them fired up for the second half, but what can we do? Defense is in shambles, full of yellow cards. But we've got a little motivation. Thornhill, that's blocked. That's a corner. Moreland's going to pick this one up. Hassel straight at the keeper. Another chance at it. Moreland, too high. This is all in the opening minutes after halftime. Lanahan Penrees finds Thornhill inside. That's blocked, though. If he finds a clear path there, either post, that should be a leveler. Sangha Matumbo, poor touch off the chest. Fowumi takes it away, starts counterattack, but has to go backwards. Good recovery defense. Greg in goal. Bit of an issue. Hasn't hasn't really helped us in any meaningful way didn't stop either one of those goals where they didn't amount much xg at all that one's off the wall wall does its trick but it's a corner kick coming up on an hour played and suddenly after we came out of the box well they seem to have settled into this second half and are starting to look the better team once again it's finally enough xg for two of the three goals we have today <sighs> Missing Elkin Baggett, one of my favorite defenders from my previous series. Greg! That was already going out. Saves it anyway and gives away a corner instead. We're probably going to have to get more attacking Subahoro! And the score is level before he gets subbed off. Wow, way to step up when needed, bud. Saw that sub on the bench and it was like, oh, no, no, you're not going to take me out yet. Can we cancel the sub? <laughs> no, let's not make that change. He has totally redeemed himself. Sungo Matomo has not. He's had a very quiet game. Man, oh, man, have we missed Gordon, but it's 2-2, folks. Kasungo Matumbo doesn't win that one, leads to this chance. Gordon probably would have won that header. Defense playing on all those dangerous yellow cards, but managing to survive. Hassel clears that away. Lenahan Penrees does not win. Vickers looked offside, and the flag is raised. XG is identical. We've had fewer shot attempts overall. Oh, straight to penalties. What the hell? Penalties is not our strong suit, by the way. Not at all. You guys are fired up already, but the team talk didn't do anything to change that. Pen Reese does what I would do. He put a good shot on target. He made sure he got it on target, and that was it. Whitehall. Gosh, Whitehall also? Where, what are you doing with all my old players? <laughs> McFadden goes same spot this time beats the keeper it's one all now White steps up Grig is not a guy that I trust but he makes a big stop and it remains one all after two kicks we are level Thornhill <laughs> terrible take absolutely terrible take and Armin scores trailing 2-1 Mortland it's not technically a must score, but it's a must score. And he levels it. Sinclair. Oof, 
great penalty right there. That was hard to get to, and Greg was nowhere near it. Now it is literally a must score for Atkins, and we're going to need Greg to step up big. It looks like we're going home on penalties at this point. Keeper remains patient, waits for it, and Atkins just slots it in the corner. Keeper just stares at it. Antal stepping up, the midfielder. What can we do? Gr oh, straight down the middle. Oh, Greg. Oh, Greg. That can't get easier of a save. Straight down the middle. Ours that was down the middle was an easy save. That should have been an easy save, but out on penalties. Did well to come back, did well to not lose, but out either way. Insane schedule to start the season four straight months of just a huge amount of matches. I mean, we had eight matches in November, two a week, all month long. October was no better. We have finally started to slow down our schedule. Just three matches in December so far, all Saturdays. We have all the way till next Sunday, till our next one. We're looking at weekend matches again all through January, all through February, all through March, and all through April. So we are finally at that phase of the season where the match load is not going to be so intense, and we are finally going to get a chance to be healthy we lasted through most of that crazy stretch just fine and then the injuries hit late in november drop in form came right away with it and it has continued into december while we've still been without our key players we will have them back very soon though if we can get through chesham united with a win get that ship righted i think we're going to be okay but let's go ahead and push forward totten the only uh Big team we're going to be up against until well, quite a while, really. Uh, most of our big chance uh, matchups are going to be at the end of the season. There's three of them right there. Three of the top five teams, six teams. Uh, where's Taunton Town right now? Oh, they're eighth. Okay. But first and second, right at the end of the season. So let's hope that we have already got ourselves uh, into a, a strong position by that point because Taunton's going to be the next hard one and i think that's where we might want to push forward to uh, before we wrap this episode up let's see what happens with these next two games will we have recovered a little bit we bounce back with two shutout victories mortland and kitching scoring against uh chesham and then against swindon supermarine who are near the bottom of the standings anyway lanahan penrace with the double thornhill also adding one sandwiched in the middle there for the three nil victory that is very helpful as we head to Totten next, our, our only clash for quite some time with the top teams. Big opportunity the rest of the month, 18th, 22nd, 21st in the standings. So we can really look to claim nine easy points. All we have to do, though, is get through Totten. And that is a bigger test for sure. With those little changes, we're still fifth in the league at 50 points, but just one behind Maidenhead, just three behind Totten and Truro uh, who've moved back into second everybody's at 26 played now so we're five games into the second half of the season out of 21 to play there so just about a, a quarter of the way through that second half still got a ways quite a ways to go in the season yet and with the other competitions complete this this is it this is all we have to worry about now going forward and I think that development piece is helping also uh, where we had seven before uh, St. Albans City have fallen off the pace a little bit. There's that big gap at pool, so it's still the top 11 creating that gap, but now we're starting to see a bit of a gap. Five points between sixth and seventh place. Still just three to Salisbury, so uh, kind of down to five in contention for the last playoff spot. And Real Bedford is still very much pulling away. Yes, they've taken those two losses, uh, but that's been it for quite some time i think they did take maybe one more draw i think they had one draw and two losses quite a while ago those couple wins though get us a little bit more in the mix for the time being goal differentials right there with truro and totten big matchup big matchup coming and at home and they beat us last time we played so we are i think they beat us last time we played right yes yeah we lost 2-1 on the road when we played them last time uh, we had a goal oh no it was an own goal from mcfadden and then Lanahan Penrice uh, 
got the only one we had. 89th minute, too, on that own goal. So rough, rough match right there. We'll be at home this time, definitely looking for more than what we got out of the guys last time around. But now as we enter January, quick check on progression. For one, we have our first player back into the 90s, Lanahan Penrice, progressing well. Uh, Ryan Gordon at an 89, but he's stalled out a little bit because of his injury. But it looks like he is coming back from that now as we've progressed. Uh, yes, yeah, we're into January. Both of those guys were expected to be back late December. So we are back to full strength for the squad. It's a matter of, you know, conditioning and getting back to, to full there. But Burcielli's into the 80s now. So we, we have, what, six players in the 80s, one in the 90s. Definite progress. Four players in the 70s. Kasango Matumbo, the latest to join that group and getting some progress. You know, there's four more guys in the 60s. There was only a couple of them before. So guys are coming along. Arthur slowly progressing. It's just he doesn't have a ton of potential. But out of 54, he's getting a little bit more serviceable into his position. But Thornhill out of 71 is much better. And now that he's finally learned the position, that's that's doing a lot for us. Yeah, he's he's accomplished now. So he has figured it out. That's good. Greg and Evans, the only ones that are really lagging behind, not showing uh, any sort of notable progress. And therefore, are going to be kind of my my preference, my first candidates of players to replace. Checking in on our one U18 guy who was excelling. Akunle, up to a 74. Really wants to earn that shot, get a chance to play. But we have wingers, we have strikers. Our depth there is not what's lacking. It's other positions. It's a center back that we need. It's a backup goalkeeper that we need. Duncan coming along at a 57, though, is going to start seeing himself uh, making a name at the senior level, I think, here in the coming season as we lack there. Uh, Brandon Forbes can play center back, but is he a center back? He's playing center back here at the U18s. He's too slow. The tackling, the marking, the heading, none of it's there. So, no, he's determined. He's got work rate. Balance, jumping, reach, and natural fitness is about it. So, no, he is not ready to uh, get in the senior squad anytime soon. But that is going to do it for this episode. I like that we're able to focus on the league completely now. And with the progress we have made, the player development we are clearly seeing, I do feel we're just going to get stronger and stronger as the season goes on. But that run of bad form thanks to some key injuries to some key guys and a heavy match load just saw us go through a little stretch there that was really rough and now instead of having a minor chance at the league and a comfortable chance at p2 now it's going back to okay well let's hope we can get into p2 before the end of the season and then come through that promotion playoff because i don't think real bedford is achievable for us at this point I think we could have near their quality by the time we play them at the end of the season and maybe beat them, but I think they're going to have enough of a cushion at that point because they're so good. Why would they be losing to anybody else, right? That's a stage that we're going to reach. That's a stage that we're coming up close to. We should be winning match after match, especially now with the match load dying down and hopefully the guys, the injuries really, really cut back on us. If we are healthy and able to play our first 11, I think we can come away with a lot of wins the rest of the season. We really only have a couple challenges left to uh, overcome. Get those points and beat the weaker teams, and you're going to move up the standings. That is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.